Hi guys. Um, okay, it's going to be my first in a series of POV videos. Um, basically, what I've got is a dub mix that I'm going to do. So I'm going to talk you through in a series of videos each element of how I'm going to construct this track. And the first video today is called Making a Stab Chord. Now, I've already got a vocal mix in this track. Here's the vocal. Save me, save me. You got to save me, save me. Somebody got to save me, save me. You got to save me, somebody got to save my soul. This whole world, etc. So, I'm going to do a dub mix, and I just want to use that first sort of um, eight bar loop of the vocal to, to construct the dub mix from. I've written some drums ahead of all that. Actually, let's listen to those drums one by one. Get our kick drum. Clap. Clap part one. A little shaky that bit. Another hat, low tom, nice percussive noise there, shaky part, nice sort of 808 open hi-hat, and I've just got this little loop in here because this kind of works quite well. So it beats all together, add the vocal in. So you get where I'm going with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loop up the vocal. Gives me the idea of the kind of grooves that I want to create. Okay, so what I do is I've got a palette of sounds here um, that I've chosen to make my stab chord with. And they include a nice sort of roadsy sound. Tune from uh, a sound from my Nexus, which is. a logic sweeping pad sound. sort of R&B lead sound. We've got uh, the Hammond organ. And piano string layer. Okay. So what I've done is I've recorded ahead of this some, some little loops of riffs that are going to go with my vocal. Here's the first one, electric piano. On top of that I've added my Nexus sound. At this point, the actual beats are not really relevant because we're trying to layer up a nice collection of sounds that have got richness, they've got multifaceted layers and textures and harmonics importantly. So you want some nice sort of low mid-range warm sounds like the roads etc and some nice sort of stringy uh, brassy sort of synth sounds etc next one is the uh, cloud sweep the organ Just for a little bit of movement, I've got a nice little sort of synthy riff in there. Okay, 
So you get the idea. Basically, I've stacked up a load of different keyboard parts to create lots of different sort of harmonies and timbers, etc., etc. The next step that I do now <coughs> is I make an arrangement. You'll see these parts here coloured in red. I've just randomly actually arranged these in sort of four bar sections and created a sort of 24 bar part. <laughs> So you can hear how every four bars, the, the composition of the track is going to change. Once I got to this point, <clears throat> I want to record this and make this into, turn this into an audio file. So I've done that. Basically, I've bounced all these regions here down to create this one audio file, which is this. <laughs> next step is to basically make random cuts where I think it would be nice to make a start point for a stab chord and <clears throat> when I've made these cuts I've then auditioned each region individually and chosen the ones that I want to save to make a chord out of so for example we've got this one here and this one here and this one here, etc. Okay, so once I've got this piece of audio recorded, I can then go in to my audio file. I can then save this selection as a certain separate audio file like a little segment give it a specific name for example save me chord one which I've already got that so it's 11 from where we are it's saved and then go to the bin and save me chord 11 is in there okay so now I'm going to get a, 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 an EXS sampler instrument. I've already created this one, so this, this will give you an idea of how I've done this one. I've created a new instrument, EXS instrument. That's called Save Called One. Go to the edit page, and I've added the sample, which is called Save Called One Wave. I've mapped it all the way across the keyboard. Let me give it some volume there. And then I'll save it. I now have that sample mapped across my keyboard. And there it is. What I've done in this particular patch, as you can see, I've got a filter set in there where I've got the low pass filter set. And the cut off frequency is quite low. But there's the original sound, which is actually quite a nice sound on its own. But in the context of my dub mix, I'm going to use it like this. So let's go back to our arrange window. Got my drums up here. Put my vocal down there, and I've played in a part which works for this. Let me go something like this. And it goes something like this. Okay. Just check that with a vocal. Excellent. So that 
that's quite a good good start to my dub mix. Got a nice little palette going on here. Got a nice little drum pattern going on. A stab chord that is in key and works with a vocal. The next <clears throat> next step would be to find a bass line. And here's the one that I chose earlier. I've used like a dusky sounding bass line, typical sort of rubbery si um, sine wave resonant sort of bass line like this. And all I've done here is I've copied that bass line over onto a more sort of traditional sort of sound from my bass station, which is this. Together the bass is sound like that. sort of platform there to start our dub mix from. So, the same principle, <coughs> I've created a few more sort of sampling instruments and laid them on different tracks. As you can see there, we've got save called one, save called two, three, four, five, six, etc, etc. Save called two goes a bit like this. a bit of movement there on the echo effect. I've got save called three. It's sort of similar to save called one really, but just a nicer sort of tone to it. Wee bit different. Now as you can see I've labelled these with colours and save called four is a part that is going to go with save called three. Basically, I've done this with various different stab sounds. So I've got save called four. Save called five. Got some piano-y layer there. And you can see I've got a little tape delay effect on that one. Let's see what that part sounds like. And finally, it's a great chip that I love. I've got one chord which is, it's like a pad really. And I'm going to use that for a transition at the end of the pattern. So if I play with that end of the pattern, like so. Go.
that's about it for now. There we are. I've made seven different patches from some audio that I played in. I've, uh, I've recorded um, some keyboard parts on what five, six different keyboard sounds and layered them up to make a nice stack of different keyboard sounds with different harmonics and different textures, etc. I've sampled them, I've put them into AXS patches, and now here I have I have six, six, seven different instances where I can play lots of really pretty groovy sounds. So, on to the next video. Hope you like this one. Uh, the next video is going to be about how I change, how I take this um, this palette of ideas and turn it into an actual mix. Thanks for watching.